Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to continue our discussion on inguinal hernia. This is a clinical series. We have seen the history taking in the previous part as well as the differential diagnosis and today we are going to proceed into one of the most important parts in diagnosing inguinal hernia. As we have always discussed, it's a clinical diagnosis and that is what we are going to discuss here. Now, if you have not seen this video of laparoscopic hernia anatomy, as well as the open inguinal hernia anatomy and the anatomy of inguinal canal, you may find this video difficult. So it's always important that you understand the anatomy, the pubic symphysis, the pubic tubercle, okay, the mid inguinal point and the midpoint of inguinal ligament. We have discussed the differences. We know that medial to this is the direct inguinal hernia or the Hasselbeck triangle and lateral to the inferior epigastric artery pulsation is the indirect hernia. Below and lateral to the pubic tubercle is femoral hernia whereas inguinal hernia is above the inguinal ligament. So please revise these concepts. As you can see here, the femoral canal is below the inguinal ligament and that is why the femoral hernia will be below, whereas the inguinal hernia coming out through the superficial ring will be medial to the pubic tubercle. The black dot is the pubic tubercle. So these are some of the basics that you need to revise. If you have not seen, have a look at those videos. So when we come to clinical examination, we have four important parts, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So we will jump into each of them one by one. So I have put this graphic for a very quick revision so that you can make out that indirect inguinal hernia, direct inguinal hernia, and femoral hernia, where you will see these things, where is the deep ring, where is the superficial ring, and where is the femoral canal. So important point, examining the standing position first or you may miss out on small hernias. Specifically inspect for direct hernia and varicocele. So that is also important. When you are looking at a swelling, the points of swelling as we discuss in a case on examination of a swelling, all of them need to be discussed. Okay. So in this video, we are focusing more on hernia point of view. But you have to point out all the points that we use to describe a swelling. So shape, location, size and laterality, left-sided or right-sided. Pyriform shape is indirect hernia. Globular shape is direct hernia. Irregular shape can be strangulation. You will also see signs of inflammation sometimes if it's a strangulated hernia. Below inguinal ligament and lateral to pubic tubercle is a femoral hernia. Above inguinal ligament and medial to pubic tubercle is a inguinal hernia. So basically some points on the swelling, the shape of it, the location, the size and the laterality. Then you look at the skin. Like I said, you can look for redness, edema, scars of surgery like appendicectomy, discoloration, Okay, so that is something that you have to see. Usually the skin over the swelling is normal in uncomplicated hernia. Visible peristalsis will be seen when intestine is the content of hernia that is known as enterocele. Expansile impulse on cuffing is diagnostic of an uncomplicated or reducible inguinal hernia. Okay, so what you have to do is tell the patient to look at the other side and then ask the patient to cough. And if the swelling increases in size, that is known as expansile impulse on coughing. Remember that we are doing all these examinations in the standing position. So once you have an expansile impulse on coughing, it's diagnostic of hernia. Exceptions, this may be absent in an omentoseal, which is irreducible, and absent in obstructed and strangulated hernia. Position of penis, it can be displaced by a large hernia, usually displaced in hydrosis. So that is something that you have to remember. So in palpation, the first thing is that you confirm your inspectory findings. Then you go to palpation, palpating the swelling. You look for temperature, you look for tenderness. Describe the swelling, like I said, all points as per swelling examination. 
and then come towards hernia specific points. You palpate the cord structures, you look for tenderness there also, testes and epididymis. Palpate with thumb in front and fingers behind, that is how usually we do. And check for getting above the swelling. What this means that if it's a scrotal swelling, you can palpate the cord structures above the swelling. But if it's an inguinal or inguinoscrotal swelling, you cannot get above the swelling. That means that the normal cord structures above the swelling cannot be palpated. So that is not possible in a hernia because it's usually an inguinal or an inguinoscrotal swelling. Now beyond this point, you can see these things in standing position as well as supine position. But beyond this point, you want to reduce the hernia and then do some of the maneuvers or tests that are described. So that is something that you need to understand. Always palpate the pubic tubercle. Swelling medial to pubic tubercle is an inguinal hernia and it's usually above the inguinal ligament. The other side is the femoral hernia. Okay. Consistency is soft and elastic in intestine, firm and doughy in omentoseal. Tense and tender if it's strangulation, a bag of warm fields if it's a varicocele, and cystic can be a lymphpharyx or an encysted hydrocele. Reducibility, how do you decide if the swelling is reducible? You can do it by manipulation or if the swelling goes down on its own. Visible expansile cuff impulse or palpable expansile cuff impulse are all features of reducibility. Once you have confirmed reducibility, only then can the next part of palpation be performed. So invagination and your different tests that are available can be done only in cases of reducible hernias. So on lying down, the direct hernia reduces itself. Difficult initially in reduction is usually an enterocele. So the first part is difficult, but once some part of the lumen of intestine goes, the rest of it goes inside easily. Whereas in omentoseele, the initial reduction may be easy, but it's difficult to completely reduce, usually due to adhesions. So cough impulse, like I said, palp palpable expansile impulse over swelling is a feature of an uncomplicated or reducible hernia, felt medial to inguinal canal, there is something known as Zeeman's technique for looking at the cuff impulse. What you do is you use an index finger at the internal ring, middle finger at the external ring, and ring finger at the femoral ring. It's a same-sided examination. What that means is for right side of the patient, you will have to use the right hand. Okay. So index finger at the internal ring, middle finger at the external ring, and ring finger at the femoral ring. Remember, like I said, these are done in reducible hernia after reducing the swelling. Then you ask the patient to cough. Okay, so basically you are palpating for a cough impulse. If it's felt at the index finger, which is at the internal ring, that means that it's an indirect hernia. Middle finger, it means that it's a direct hernia. And ring finger, it means that it is a femoral hernia. Okay, so that is a three finger technique or a Zeeman's technique for cuff impulse. Invagination test, some units don't recommend doing it. It's not that difficult also in cases of reducible hernias. Index finger is invaginated into the scrotum and you try to enter the inguinal canal through the superficial ring with the help of your finger. Okay, direct it upward and backward, then it is indirect hernia, directed only backward, then it is a direct hernia. Deep ring occlusion test, what you do is you occlude the deep ring with a thumb after reducing the hernia and then see if the cuff impulse is not visible after deep ring occlusion, that means that it's an indirect hernia, right? If impulse persists and it's medial to your thumb occlusion, then that means that it is a direct hernia, right? The indirect hernia comes through the deep inguinal ring. So if the thumb occlusion reduces the hernia and does not let it come out, then that is an indirect hernia. That is what this means. Okay, so invagination test, deep ring occlusion test, Zeeman's three finger test. These are tests that you do in cases of reducible uncomplicated 
third year. Percussion usually not very important, but it's resonant in case of enterocele and dull in case of omentocele. All the other causes are usually dull. Okay, auscultation, we don't recommend auscultating on a hernia, but if you auscultate, it's peristaltic sounds in enterocele. Always remember that after looking at the swelling, you have to check all the hernial orifices, opposite side, back, okay? You have to look for tone of abdominal muscles and the malgagny bulge by head lifting and straight leg raising test. So that is checking the tone of abdominal muscles, opposite side examination. You have to do a per rectal examination because benign prostatic hypertrophy is a risk factor for hernia. You have to look at respiratory system and cardiac system. Full body examination as we do for all patients has to be done, but special focus on risk factors of hernia. So that is how you will do your clinical examination for a case of hernia. If you want a very ready reckoner or a very simplified summary, then this is all that we have discussed for inspection. Patient has to stand, inspect, then look at the shape, the various shapes. We have mentioned the skin, visible peristalsis, expansal cuff impulse, and penis position. On palpation, the basic things after the pubic tubercle and the expansile cuff impulse, and the special tests are Zeman's technique, reducibility, ring occlusion test, invagination test, and your examination for the risk factors. Once you have done all this, and this is very commonly asked in exam, what is your diagnosis? These are the important points that you have to mention in your diagnosis. So left side, so side, complicated or uncomplicated, then reducible, irreducible, indirect, direct, femoral. So around seven points are there in diagnosis that you should mention. So for example, in this case, it's a left-sided, uncomplicated, that is reducible, indirect, incomplete, inguinal, enterocele. Enterocele intestine is the content with normal muscle tone and chronic constipation as the trigger. So this gives you and your examiner a complete explanation of the case in only seven to eight keywords in diagnosis. So that is how you mention your diagnosis. So in the next part, now we are just going to see how to approach different kinds of hernias and how to differentiate the various types of hernias, basically a clinical approach to diagnosing a case of hernia. Thank you.